Hello, y'all on YouTube. This is Rob with Rob's Nerdy Knives. Today we have a very special unboxing, something that came in from one of my channel members and subscriber, and just really want to say thank you to them. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, this is the same person who lent me the Megaron Arma, which is uh, just a giantly overbuilt knife. This might be another kind of overbuilt knife, so I'm kind of excited to check it out. All right. Careful there. All right, so let me go ahead and open that up. Oh, didn't quite clear it yet. I don't want to catch it there. <laughs> Eventually, I it. All right, so today I'm opening up with my Brian Brown Jaeger uh, version three. This is a Smoky Mountain Knife Works exclusive. Love this knife. All right, so we got a knife here. Got some original goat stuff here. All right. Rob, this is the pocket clip. What, is there something in here? Hold on. Is there supposed to be something in here? <laughs> Let's take a look. Uh, this is the pocket clip hole. Oh, this is already in the pocket clip hole. Okay. Ah. I got you already. It was covered up. Okay, and then you got the original goat stickers right here. I got some of these when I got my sticker, my, my original goat stickers. By the way, if you didn't know I'm an affiliate with Original Goat, check out my link down below. You get 15% off when you order from them. If you use uh, my, my code that's down in the description, would love, love for you to do that. It helps the channel, but it helps you guys out more, right? And I'd uh, love to see you guys save some money while you get something really cool. Original Goat's got some awesome, awesome scales out there, man. I love their stuff. All right, so what do we have here? We have, oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. So this is the original scale. So let's take a look what we have here. Got to get into this a little bit. Um, all right, so this looks like an Andrew Demco 80. All right, so it is an Andrew Demko 8010. He put these scales on. This is the original scales right here. And he put these on. I wonder if it's a linerless scales. Okay. So, oh, it is. Yeah, he said it was a little loose and he wasn't sure why. So I'm going to take this apart and we're going to take a look at it, see what's going on. Uh, it is a back lock. So you can see this right here. Now, you got to be careful with the back lock. It, it'll, you've got to have your finger up here to catch it like that, right? Now, the nice thing about these guys, they do catch like that, but make sure your fingers aren't down too low or they will cut you, right? So you got to be way up here like that if you're going to do that. You, you may just, you know, drop it like that, but even then, you see that? I almost cut myself because I wasn't up close. So otherwise, if you do that, just close it like that. Definitely has a nice, strong uh, spring to it with that back lock. Typically, there's like a spring in here that pushes back on this, and then that engages the lock, and then this goes right in here, locks in place. But I, I see what he's talking about. Definitely a little loose. All right, so we will definitely have to take a look at that. These are the original scales that it had. You can see there's a liner in there. And uh, looking at the thickness of those, yeah, these look like they're linerless. So I would have to confirm that. But yeah, let's 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 get into this. Um, I'll be willing to try this and see if I can figure it out. Um, I was also gonna maybe look at the Megaron and maybe maybe at the same time we can go ahead and put some some cage bearings in it. Um, if I have them, I'm more than happy to put them in there. Otherwise, I'll have to order them. All right, so these are T6s. Yeah, definitely T6s. And then this is, is that a T8? Or is it a T10? Let me see. Yeah, that's a T8. That's a T10. All right, so... There's a T10. Yeah, T10. So that's going to be our screws that we're going to need here. This is a big boy. Definitely a big boy. I would probably get, uh, you know, I would love to get a, if I was going to get one of these, I would definitely get a, uh, uh, a custom deep pocket carry clip. But that's just me, right? I like those. Now, this is this is this this knife is definitely in the overbuilt range. Uh, definitely be over overbuilt for me. Now, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use this Ultim because these screws take a little while to come out, and it's nice to be able to spin them like this. 
This makes it uh, pulling them off a lot easier. Okay, now why is this not coming off? Okay, so there's that screw. Hmm, I wonder if it's spinning over here. I'll look about the same width of screw, um, depth of screw, so that's good. Sometimes, you know, some are longer and some are shorter. So, like that one's longer. That was one of the, the deep pocket carry clips there. So, okay. All right, so that's a lock back coming out. You can see that it's probably spring loaded there. Now, I don't know why this is not coming out. Maybe I have to pull pressure. I'm still, still not quite there. There we go. There we go. All right. So it's got a little Loctite on there. Interesting. And I already can see some of the stuff coming off. This is part of that. Yep, there's a spring. And typically that'll go in here like this, right? So now let's get the pivot off. There we go. All right. Whew. There's the washers. Okay. Ooh. Oh, got foster. Okay, so you got a little Teflon in there. All right, so it's Teflon on there. Interesting. Now that finally came out, of course I dropped a pin. So where'd the pin go? There you are. This one's stuck in there pretty good. Are there any differences in these sizes? Yeah, okay, so Tiff, Andrew Demko does this. All right, so you see how there's two lines right there on these things? This happened to my 8020 when I put my original goat scales on there. Now, in order to get this off, I might have to use a tool, but what I do is I wrap it up really good because we don't want to scratch anything. But I want to do this the safest way to get it out not cause any damage, right? So I'm going to use this. There we go. Got it. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah. So... One side is thicker than the other, so that tells me, yeah, there, yeah. All right, so it looks like he had those reversed. That's interesting, I think. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I don't know. 
Let's compare the two. Are there, are there any differences between these two? Oh, there are. One has two lines and one has one. Well, one is slightly longer than the other. I think. Maybe. I don't know. Interesting. Makes me wonder if that goes up there. Maybe this one goes down here. And then this one goes up here. Wait, go down. Interesting, 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 interesting. Okay, so typically your lock back is going to be over here like this, right? Then we have our pivots in the back. We have these guys over here. They're going to go in like, is it, is it this way? I think it's this way. Stay. And this goes in, yeah, like that. There we go. And so then when you push, you see it's, it's pushing against that. You're bending down like that. So. All right, so that puts that in place. Let's see if this locks up pretty well here. So we've got this extra pin, and I'm not exactly sure where that pin's supposed to go. So that's our tension right there. Now what I want to make sure is these are set in well. These should just slide right in easily, in and out, if all things are equal. Okay. So now where does my little pin here go? Oops, I've got a screw here and a screw there. Is it right here? This is a captive pivot. It is. Yep, right there. So this little D-shape right there goes in there. It's a set. So now the blade's going to go in. Just testing it right now to kind of see where the fit's going to be. All right, so that would fit in right there. Okay, and so... Okay, yeah, so that's the pin. So this is going to be, yeah, that's the stop pin. You see that? That's the stop pin for the blade. That way we're not going to hit the blade, okay? Very cool. All right, so now let's get the blade off to release a little pressure. Take that off. All right, so what I like to do is clean off some of the stuff here. Now these are very thin washers, so... like to make sure they're clean. These are phosphor, I mean Teflon. So it uses Teflon and phosphor bronze. It's interesting. 
I mean, it's definitely going to be a nice sealed sort of thing. Now, some people, because of that, they won't use oil, which is fine. That's your prerogative. I tend to use a little bit of oil. I notice he doesn't have any oil in here at all. I don't know if that's a personal choice. And I may try a little bit of oil. Uh, hopefully, he's okay with that. Um, and if not, then we'll take it apart and clean it. So, worst case, right? What I'm looking for is any sort of burrs that are on there. It's going to just clean that off nicely. Now I like to make sure the blade doesn't have anything sticking off, which it probably doesn't. We just kind of do a little... I don't know if this is the triad lock or if this is a... I don't know. I remember if it's just a triad lock or if it's just a lock back, but it's a pretty robust lock. I'll say that much. So typically, I don't know if he does the washers, the Teflon on the inside or outside. I, I would imagine that would be more for the titanium, right? Because you be a little smoother. Steel is supposed to be really nice. So I'm going to assume that. Now this is a matter of choice. You know, some people may not want to do this, but I'm going to put just a very, very, very small amount of oil on there. It's always like the really polished side facing the blade. And I think this is the more polished side. So on this side, I'm going to just put a little... I think that's it. I've got the pin. Now let's make sure all everything comes together nicely. Just making sure everything's together nice and tight. Let's see if we fix that little looseness. I don't know. Unless there were some other parts that I don't know about. This should fix it, right? Yeah, no rattle. No rattle. We're good and solid. So, yeah, it was these pins right here. They were, I reversed them, and I noticed that on my Andrew Demko uh, 8020.5, and probably something that he does. And uh, there's some little double lines, like so the single line one was back here, and the double line was up here, and they were both facing the other way. And so when I flipped them, they slid in much easier, and I swapped the two, and now everything's lined pretty well. So let's just finish reassembling the rest. Pretty exciting. Get a chance to enjoy the knife now and check it out. He's got some Loctite on there already. I'm going to probably leave some of that on there. I don't know. Let's see. Maybe it'll take a little off. I'm not too concerned about the Loctite, so... Yeah, we're going to do it this way. So just so you know, he asked me if I wanted to check this out. He put some original goat scales on there, which I thought was really cool. And I said, yeah, I'd, I'd love to check this out. Now, is this a knife I would buy? Probably not. But then he did say, hey, um, I put these scales on, and it was a little rattly, and I wasn't sure about that. And I said, well, hey, you know, I'll take a look at it. And uh, so what I wanted to do is fix that first before I took a look at it, because that way you can get a really, I think, a better quality experience with the knife. And that's kind of what I'm doing here, right? All right, so we got all those on. 
and we'll make sure the pivot is right when we're there. Let's see how we are as far as the pivot. Oops, I got the right one. Here we are. All right, so let's see, make sure we do this right. Catch it there. So what do you think, buddy? Um, if you're watching the video, no rattle, we're all good. It's these little, it was these little pins right here. They had to be swapped and switched. Um, sometimes it matters and you'll see a little, one side will be smooth and the other side will have like a, uh, a single kind of a milling out of little uh, rivet or whatever kind of thing in there. Not rivet, um, a cutout, if you will. Um, I almost want to say like a jimping, but it's not, but it goes all the way around. So it's a milling. Um, but this is the original goat. So let me go ahead and put all this stuff away so we can enjoy the knife now and take a look at it. And, and you know, I was more than happy to, to do that because I really wanted to get a chance to check this out. This is one of those knives that I would love to have tried out. I just would never probably buy. And so I always appreciate that when my subscribers are awesome enough to share a knife with me. And I would never hard use or do anything with it. Now, in this case, he asked me to fix it. So I'm more than happy to do that. And I've done that more than once for people. So... Um, so if, if you saw the lock back, it has a bar in here and that bar is what controls this tension. So if this is ever like, if you have one of these and this is really hard to depress, you can actually control that and adjust that tension in there with that little spring. You would take it apart and you'd probably bend it ever so slightly. You know how I tune the detent and uh, I kind of, um, on this right here, I'll do the lock bar and I'll kind of bend it back a little bit. It's the same idea except it's going this way, and here it's going this way, because this right here, and I think this is the, considered the triad lock, I'm pretty sure, um, it, it'll, it'll lock up there, and it's nice and solid now. No rattly, he's going to really enjoy that. I think he'll be happy. I, I, it makes me enjoy this a lot more as well. Now, I may go back, put a little Loctite on there, just so that it doesn't travel on you, but now the trick with that is hold your finger up high, so you got to make sure you're up here like this. When you drop it, you're going to catch right there on the knuckle. That way you're not going to slice your finger. So don't, don't do it down here, right? Because you're going to slice. you got to hold it up high if you do that. Now, if that makes you nervous, if anybody's nervous, just you know, do it the traditional way like most people will do. So it goes like that. And then if I wanted to, I could do it left-handed as well. So see like that? Now, this is left-hand. It's reversible. It's absolutely a reversible clip. I do think Lynch sells clips for these. If you're ever interested in more deep carry clips, some people like it like that. They like to see a big part out there and they love the giant lanyard. That's a little, you know, over the top, but it beautiful contoured shape. Love how Original Goat do, does that. Nice, nice texturing on there uh, going all the way around. This reminds me of my Shaman. It reminds me of my uh, pair of three with the RG Custom Metalwork scales. Uh, so I do like that. Definitely a big boy of a knife. So... And with those titanium scales, I believe these are, well, I think they're, yeah, they're titanium because it doesn't feel like aluminum. That's, aluminum is a little lighter. It has a different sound to it. But you can see that. That's a solid, solid knife. And that really makes this knife premium. I think he's going to enjoy Oh, oh, yeah. Now, now that oil is breaking it in really, really nicely. And, and to me, I feel like that's worth it, right? And the trick with this, if if you do get it and you feel like it's too hard, don't push up here. You got to push down here. You're going to use it's the idea of a pulley, a lever. You're you're trying to find the the center of, at where you're pivoting. Which there's a remember, there's a uh, yeah, it's right here. That's the pivot point. And the closer you are, the more force you have to be. The further away, the less force. So I do that. It drops that. See how it disengages the triad right there, like that, which is locked in there. And then it just drops down here to my finger, and then you can just let it close. And that triad lock has a nice little pressure in here, if you didn't know that. It's going to pull it close. So this is sort of like the detent. This is a version of the detent. So let, let's listen. See that? Nice and solid. Yeah, it already traveled a little bit, so I'm going to put some Loctite on there. And I figured it would, because it's it's a robust blade. This this is not a, a knife for... for uh, 
for small hands. Okay, let me put it this way. I mean, it's 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 maxing out my my hands, so which is fine. But um, if you like big knives, you're gonna like this. And the original goat scales are just they rock, they rock. And I I, I really hope I don't know if he bought these before I became an affiliate. I hope he got the fifteen percent off when he bought them. But if you're if you've been on the fence and you're thinking, man, I might want to try that. Do it, do it, and use the code. Use the code, get 15% off. Man, I would love for you guys to have that. It helps the channel, believe it or not. It does help the channel too, but I I think it, it'll allow you, it'll help you and make you enjoy your knife more when you know you save somebody. So I'm gonna let that Loctite travel on the threads a little bit because it tends to want to move by diffusion. And we're gonna make sure we just get into there. Reverse thread to the click. And we want it just to get it in. I don't want to get it on the washers or anything else. All right, so now I'm going to make sure my centering is in. There we go. All right. Typically, the other screws should be fine. Um, what I will do is I'll just make sure everything else is nice and tight. I'll use this, this screwdriver because it has a little better leverage. I'm trying to over tighten it. I just want to make sure it's all the way threaded. I don't want to strip anything, right? So I'll make sure it's in there nice and solid. It's not loose. Yeah, they were all just a hair loose after set, settling down. I think there's a... Uh, it's not, I'm not screwing it into necessarily the, the plastic here. It's, uh, I think there's a little steel, I don't know, what you call them, tubes inside that's, that are threaded. So here we go. So now just to see, yeah, it's a big boy, so you have to get a nice little flick action going there. There's definitely enough weight for that to fall really nicely. And this, once you let it sit, I don't, I don't wanna, I don't wanna flick it too much. I want that Loctite to sit, but this is really, really cool. It's definitely worth checking out. And again, like I said, I'm always super, super grateful for anybody who allows me to check out knives like this. And I'm not gonna, I don't hard use these knives. I'm just checking out here at the desk, most likely. What I might do, which I typically do, I always like to send the knife back a little sharper than I got it. So I might just do it. Now, that's a big old blade. Let's see what the angle here. Wow. Okay, so that edge is pretty even, a little, yeah, a little shorter here, but a little longer there, which makes sense, because if they, they sharpened it from like a pivot like that, it'll be shorter here and it'll go out longer. It's kind of like what you do when you do a tanto. So, unless you're doing freestyle or freehand, if that's very typical. Like I have a KME guided sharpener, and uh, that's typically how my edges will look when I use that unless I'm dead center and it's perfectly even, but it's always going to be a little shorter on that just because it's kind of like a, a pivot, you know, your pivot, you're moving around. And if you're going along an edge and it's a certain angle, you go this way, it's going to be longer going further away. So without getting into too nerdy with the geometry, but that's kind of how that works. I believe this is S35VN blade steel. Yeah, S35VN blade steel. That'll sharpen up really nice. Oh, there we go. We're starting to get that nice crazy edge. So I like to have that nice crazy edge. And I think I think stropping it, it's not a it's not a full sharpening, it's not reprofiling the edge. Still factory edge, and, and what you're doing is you're just you're just buffing it up. So like if you cut anything, you know, it'll just help bring all that steel back nice to that nice super sharp spot. Uh, I have a little oil there. I wonder where that oil came from. Okay. So there is a little bit of noise in there, but that's the pivot. I think that's the blade stop. Right? The way I can tell that, here, let's go ahead and drop that blade. Yeah, so, um, like I told you before, um, there's that pin right there. I don't know if you can see that. You see that pin right in there? 
That is the blade stop pin. It engages, and you can almost see the little line right there. That's where it stops, because otherwise the blade, the sharp edge blade, would hit that or the back of the, the, the back spacer. And so that's called a blade stop pin, right? Just like you have the, um, the blades, um, blade opening stop pin, right? There's a, in this case, this is, the, this is where it engages. The, the lock bar, the triad lock here, engages on the tang in this little piece right here will engage in here and locks in place. But when, when the blade drops, it is resting on that pin so it doesn't hit back there like that, right? So that's the nice part about that. But when it's open, you can hear that a little bit. This is very similar to my kick stop. I have a, um, um, a kick stop, a, a Redention 229. A Chavez rendition 229 and that little kick stop sometimes it'll make a little bit of rattle because it's a separate piece and it's got a little pin and a little washer of its own and that's what that is right there but it is it's not it's no longer shaking in between there's no space in between the scales are sitting nice and solid it's keeping the blade in place definitely feels really good really solid what probably what he had when he had the original scales in here which you know still are pretty cool but man I gotta tell you that titanium, that just makes that just look so, so much nicer. So much nicer. Let me get stuff out of the way. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get this out of the camera so you can actually, we can focus on the knife. All right, so I'm going to probably have edited a lot of this, right? Uh, fast forward through some of that. Um, um, try not to go too fast because in case you want to, if you've never taken one of these apart and you're kind of curious. I know it's that some other guy asked me about another spider code, spider code, the, uh, the siren serene i forget but the, that one has a very similar lock back there it's it's the same lock back and you have that bar that goes in there that's how you would tune it now that one is um it's blade that goes on to g, uh, g10 or, or carbon fiber scales and when you have that with the phosphor bronze it's it's a little harder to get that beautiful action because you know, G10 is going to mold and be a little more malleable than, than titanium is. And did that travel? Here, let's do a couple of flicks here. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, we might have opened up a little bit. I, uh, you know, you want to set it, and you want to leave it, and you want Loctite to set in place. I just, you know, we're, I'm still kind of experiencing the unboxing here, so. So what I'm doing, I think it was just a little bit too much. All right, now I think we're in a good spot. So if I leave this alone and let it sit for 24 hours and let that Loctite cure, it should work really well. Um, yeah, you can see it's a tight fit. Those are really thin washers, but it's a, it's a solid fit. It's in there really well, really good tolerances on that. That's a big boy blade, beautiful swedge on here. A nice flat grind. Definitely not a super thin slicer, but it does come down to a nice edge. Pretty sharp once you strop that up. Really nice. S35BN blade steel is really great. Beautiful swedge on top. Love the over jimping up here. This is jimping I can deal with. My Chavez had aggressive jimping, but it was sharp. And so I had to file that down a little bit. And had some aggressive edges. Now, original goat, again, it's done a fantastic job. All these chamfering all the way around, even where there's no typically sharp edges. And if I remember correctly, because I don't know if this is the one I handled, but something similar from Cold Steel, I could be wrong. I just want to look at this real quick. Um, so these would go on here. Well, that's aluminum. Is that aluminum? Yeah, that's aluminum. So that's, that's how they did a little weight relief by using aluminum. But if I remember correctly... No, it's pretty rounded. It's pretty rounded. I thought these were a little sharp. No, they do. They do. They do a good job of rounding that. Yeah. So that's nice. I. I this must be another knife I'm thinking about. But uh, there we go. Um, they do a nice job of rounding all this. The chamfering is really good everywhere, and I think I think it's definitely worth it. Really, really nice. Now, some people are like, well, why? What are these lines? Well, there's micro texture. Let me focus in on that. Can you see the micro texturing that's going on there? Of course, the light here is really going to highlight that because I've got angled lights and everything. But that's going to really highlight that a lot. And then you've got the deep pocket carry clip and you have that little washer, backspacer kind of thing that you need to make sure that's nice and flat. And 
That's now it's a steel clip. I would prefer titanium because I tend to bend these, and this is going to be pretty thick steel. So, but it's a thick knife. I mean, this is the, one of those knives that you don't want it to fall out of your pocket, and you're probably going to be out there hard using. This is definitely a hard use knife. Now, with these titanium scales, it does put it into a different category, though. It could be in a collection series, and it could be a nice EDC knife. Now, I mean, if you like the EDC giant knives, <laughs> this could definitely be a work one now. It might scare a few people, so just keep that in mind. Some people get kind of freaked out about the size of a knife, which I think is ridiculous, but, you know, whatever. This reminds me a lot of the Andrew Demko scales. I mean, thumb studs, right? That's a very typical kind of thumb stud. Now, this is the smaller 8020, and you can see that's it makes this look like a little EDB super small knife. But, but just to kind of give you a comparison how big this guy is, let's just look at that. So there's an 8020. And here's my Brian Brown one. I mean it's about the same size as an 8020. But where it stands out, let's 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 put it next to the Chavez that I was telling you. So here's a Chavez. Oh, what am I doing, guys? Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You're not seeing this. I hope hopefully that wasn't too bad. I apologize. And if it was, maybe I'll cut it out. But if not, you know, be patient with me. But so there's the Chavez. And the Chavez is a pretty big knife. It is a big knife, right? This is like eight and a quarter. This guy here is almost nine inches. It's just shy of nine inches. And then you have a Shergorov, which is right at nine inches as well. And they're about the same size there, right? So that's that's a pretty big knife. That's a big, big boy there. And uh, so here... See, here's, here's, here's what I was telling you about the kickstop, and that's a separate pin that's in there. And when you open it, you can actually hear a little bit of rattle because of the pin. I mean, it locks it in pretty good, but definitely can hear that. So just, you know, I, th I think it's interesting. I think it's really fascinating. And here's the Shergorov, right? You know, that beautiful butter reaction. You get in there. Really nice. So that's the nice action that you expect in a knife. And when I first got this, it didn't, you know, it was rattling and a little loose, but now look at this. I, I don't want to shake it too much because I'm, I'm trying to let that lock tight. I don't want it to travel. Uh, but yeah, everything looks really good. Everything looks really good. This, even the black G10 backspacer, I'm sure somebody sells probably a titanium version if you really want it to deck it all out. Get a lynch clip titanium clip, get a uh, probably a titanium backspace. I'm sure somebody would offer that. I think that would be outstanding. So very, very cool. That just looks really, really classy to me. Let me go ahead and open this up. I'm going to open up nice and slowly. Let's get a nice close-up on that. Just look at that beautiful. I almost feel like that meme where I said, would you look at that? Would you look at, just look at that. Just look at that. I forget how the guy is, but it's just hilarious. I think he's a comedian who does that. Really nice, really, really nice. Let's look at the back. And you saw that, it had, it had a D-shaped D pivot in there, so it's a captive pivot, and it's on both sides of the scales. Um, I think, yeah, it's on, it's on these aluminum scales as well, but they, uh, Original Goat did a really good job in, in locking that in. So really nice. Definitely, definitely a cool little blade now. And the action is really nice. I think you're gonna really like that. Now, I, I'm not doing a whole lot, but this will break in really beautifully. I put just a small touch of oil. You don't need a whole lot, but that's going to just be really beautiful. So I think I think that'll be really nice. Yeah, so this is the Andrew Demko 8020. Uh, sorry, 8010. This is when he was with uh, uh, Cold Steel still before he left and did his own thing. All uh, right, uh, this is uh, the Triad Lock, which is an Andrew Demko design and the AD for Andrew Demko, and this was the 10. Then he did a 15, which is one that I was kind of considering. Still a big knife. This is a nine inch. I have the 20.5, which is a smaller, more reasonable knife. I'm not sure about the eight. I, I'm on the fence sometimes about getting AD 15, uh, just because it's, you know, it's almost too big. But I saw one of one of my uh, uh, subscribers and member channel members actually has an AD 15. It's all blacked out. Just love that thing. You know who you are. Uh, every time we look at your channel page, man, on the live streams, I'm like, dude, makes me want that knife. I can't find it anywhere. No one seems to have it available. So I would like to get it. And then I would like to put the original goat scales on that. I think that would just look so sick. It look so sick. But I would also do the all all steel, you know, and, and uh, tit uh, titanium as well. I think that would look really, really nice. Now, I will say, I noticed one little thing. This is a little sharp here. 
So my personal preference on this, if I, if I were to do this myself, I would take this apart and I would file that. Now you could put a piece of tape over here and you could do a very gentle filing you know, without having to take it apart. But that's just a little bit sharp right there. And so what I mean by that is it's G10 and I would probably get like a, a small file like this, work that, but I put some tape to make sure this doesn't scratch the back of the scale, right? And then just kind of get that edge off there. It doesn't really get in anything, but it's just enough that it could scratch you or, or catch you or something like that. Cause it's, you know, it's plastic and pretty sharp. So my personal thing, I love all round in this. I like like smooth round everywhere. You know, if, if it's got a really sharp edge, not a super fan of that. And everything else here is done really well. Really nice. Even the tried lock, you notice this if we, oh, I'm trying not to open it really hard, but you do a little flick up here. When you open this right here and this lock sticks out, it's not sharp. Sometimes that can be really sharp. And, uh, that, you know, that they did a really good job on that. You can choke up here. It's not the best choke up. This is a very tight choke up kind of thing. More for a pinch grip, I guess, right? You could do more of a pinch grip here. Um, I have large hands, so I got a good full grip in here. I could still choke up here. I think you can get extra large, double extra large hands in here for sure. You might be a little over the top there, but it's, it you know, it, it's not it's not a hand that's made for, I got meaty fingers, right? Large hands, but my width of my fingers tend to put them into the extra large because they're meaty fingers. Lengthwise, they tend to be a medium, not extra large. So there is that. By the way, when it's in there, this is solid, absolutely solid, just beautiful. And then when we release that, there's no pivot play, uh, no uh, pivot lash. And then when it locks in there, it's in there really solid. That lock bar has it really, really in there well. Yeah, very impressed, very impressed. All right. I've been going on, raving and talking and sh whatever. So, hey, if you have any questions about the channel, about the knife, the review I'm going to be doing on this, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Love to hear your questions about it. And uh, yeah, appreciate that. Um, so if you found this content fun, interesting, worthwhile, entertaining, or informative, would you please consider hitting the like button down below? And if you've already hit that like button, would you please consider hitting the subscribe button? Subscribing and liking the channel really helps out the channel, allows the channel to grow, allows the channel to do more things, become bigger, and ultimately do more things for you guys. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And if you and if you've done all that, uh, well, let me first say to you guys who watch the videos, who like the videos, who subscribe, thank you. I appreciate you guys watching the videos. That really does help out. And and I appreciate you guys enjoying the the, the, the stuff I put out there. I, I try to work hard on it, try to make it worth worth your while. I try to get some content out there every single day, and I've been doing that pretty consistently here. Um, actually, consistently since I committed to it. And some days I was a little late because it's really hard, but you know we're getting it. So I just, I appreciate you guys for that and um, for watching and stuff. So thank you. Um, if you haven't already, maybe hit that notification button so you can be notified of future content. And finally, to all my channel members, thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate you guys. Some of you guys have been channel members since the channel first started. So thank you. Or when we first could become channel members, I want to say thank you. I appreciate you guys. Uh, to those of you who are on the fence, say, hey, maybe I'd like to be a channel member. I have three different tiers. I will send you a sticker and you get exclusive content. There's a once a month channel members giveaway. Pretty cool. So just want to let you know about that. I don't want to bribe you into that. That's not what it's meant. It's just my way to say thank you. And I appreciate you guys. Um, still, you don't have to be a channel member. Just if you want to just watch the video, enjoy it. I appreciate that. So, but I do appreciate you guys who, who want to do that and support and be a partner with the channel. So thank you. Thank you very much. I really want just want you to know that it means a lot. All right, so if you haven't already, check me out over on Instagram at robs underscore nerdy underscore knives. Again, that's on inst at Instagram at robs underscore uh, robs underscore nerdy underscore knives. Thanks so much for watching today. Have a great day and a great week.